Hi, my name is Manpreet and today we will be talking about some useful tips and tricks on how to save money as a college student. Um, college life is difficult, especially if you're on a tight budget and you have to sustain yourself through the month. Uh, so it's really important to understand how to spend money wisely uh, so that we are able to cover all the expenses uh, and even save a little bit of safety net. So in this video, we will be talking about managing your finances, uh, budgeting in college and even share some tips and tricks on how to save some extra money. So stay tuned until the very last because these tips are helpful for international students as well uh, who are coming to the US or Canada for their education. To start with, first of all, we need to know how much money we have at our disposal, um, how much money we can actually spend, like what's the maximum limit. Uh, and to know that, my friend, first of all, we need to prepare a budget. That basically means list all your income and uh, expenses uh, for a specific period of time. Uh, let's say if you're preparing a budget for a month, uh, uh, you will need to list all your income uh, and monthly expenses. Your financial aid could be anything. Uh, it could be um, scholarships, grants, uh, you're trying to cover your cost with a part-time job or your parents are paying for your education. It could be anything. Uh, income basically means you have money that you can actually spend. When considering the income, make sure you uh, are listing the amount that you are receiving after the taxes. That is the money that you'll be actually getting to spend. Next, if we talk about expenses, it could be anything, your monthly rent, electricity bill, uh, books, transportation, phone bills, insurance. Uh, just make sure like when you're listing these major expenses, you do not forget to mention uh, the everyday petty expenses. Um, that could be like getting a cup of coffee from a favorite coffee shop. So make sure you like list all the expenses, be it major, be it petty. Once you have all the information, organize it categorically. Uh, to do that, you can use a notebook, an Excel sheet, or there are uh, also free apps nowadays. Uh, one good app that I can think of as of now is Mint. Uh, it's a pretty good app. All you have to do is like link your financial accounts and credit cards, like whatever you are going to use. Uh, and each time I make a transaction, it'll uh, automatically track that and like list it categorically so whenever you want to check how much money you spent on restaurant you uh, can simply go to that specific category and track that now once everything is listed you can get a fair idea um, on how much money you're actually spending uh, what expenses are crucial and where there is a room for improvement if your income is less than your expenses, I would say it's high time that you reconsider your spending methods or just try to make more money. In either case, having a budget is always a good idea, even if your earnings are more than your expenses. Now you have a sheet in front of you and you know that you need to cut a few expenses. Now how much you need to cut back depends on your financial goal. Uh, your financial goal could be like uh, merely paying for your expenses or it could be like a uh, covering your expenses plus uh, paying for your student loan. Basically, your financial goal is the deciding factor uh, on how much you need to cut back. Let's discuss the best practices so that you're left with enough money to cover your expenses, uh, prepare a financial cushion, your leisure, and even if possible, like uh, save a little bit for investment if you can. Now, when we talk about cutting the expenses, uh, there are a few expenses uh, which are like quite fixed. Uh, for example, your tuition fee. Well, if it is covered under a scholarship, uh, then it's a totally different scenario. Uh, other fixed cost could be your rent for boarding. Now, when it comes to rent, uh, it is pretty much a fixed cost. No matter how much money you have in your bank account, you'll still have to pay it. Uh, so to make sure that you have enough money to like sustain you through the month, um, I would say it's better to plan your living situation in advance. Now, if you talk about like living on campus, uh, though it cuts the transportation cost, but it's still not always a cheaper option. I would say if you're able to get a budget friendly apartment within a walking distance from your university and are able to have a roommate uh, whom you can share your rent with, I would say that will save you a lot of money. Weigh your options like on campus and off campus living situations uh, and see which works best for you. My next advice would be saving on books. Um, Spending money on books is like an inevitable cost and no matter what you do, uh, you cannot get rid of that cost completely. But I'd say there are a few things that you can practice and like you can save a couple of bucks on those too. For example, uh, get used to textbooks. 
um there are a few websites where you can actually uh, rent used textbooks uh, then there are also websites uh, which give you the option of like selling uh, old books and even buying old books uh, i'll uh, attach the link down in the description box uh, so you guys can check that out or you can even share a book with your classmates just get a textbook and like split the cost and share it i mean books are books right um as long as they're in a good condition i don't see a point spending a big chunk uh, on the new ones next thing could be saving on groceries uh, there are a few supermarkets which are like pocket friendly uh, there is aldi there is lady uh, there's costco costco is a really good one i really like that i remember back in the day when i was like new in this country uh, i read a few articles on stores where you can find uh, budget friendly groceries there were many saying aldi is good uh, then there were some who said trader joe's is better uh, i mean in all fairness they were all right but one thing that i realized personally uh, was is it even um, worth it to look for cheaper options i mean what will be more budget friendly for me uh, going to a supermarket which is like near my house and save time and money or is it better to like go to a cheaper store which is like 10 miles away so that thing really impacted my decision not to forget that every student has a car in their student life and if you get a car for grocery shopping you'll also uh, have to factor in the cost of its upkeep um, and also the insurance cost and honestly i'm not really aware about the public transportation situation in every us city uh, so i cannot really comment on how much discount you'll get as a student on public transportation i'm not against anything uh, having a car or not is more for personal decision My point here is do not merely look for a cheap supermarket uh, if you're trying to save some money uh, you'll also have to factor in other costs that are involved for example uh, the transportation cost i mean i'm not suggesting to go to whole foods if that is near your location uh, but what i'm trying to say is if given the option between costco and aldi which is like 10 miles away from your location uh, going to aldi doesn't make sense at all right not only you will lose money but also your precious time uh, and if you're a college student who is also working part time i'm sure you can relate with time crunch uh, maybe you could have used those extra hours in your shift and like earned a couple of bucks extra my point here is always check the opportunity cost are you actually able to save that money or you just ended up paying more the other way around in my opinion uh, coupons can get us some good deals i mean sure they do not look very cool to use uh, but they definitely have some good deals to offer from time to time uh, another important tip that i can give regarding groceries is always always prepare a list of items that you need uh before you go to the grocery store take a good look in your pantry and check all the items that need a refill uh and only mention those items on that list that way we avoid spending money on unnecessary items that only take the shelf space and ultimately are thrown away next thing that you can do is uh, limit your supermarket visits um i mean i think once a week should be enough that way you will save money on commute uh, you will save commute time and also limit those impulse decisions uh, of buying extra items that we take every time we go to the grocery store then toiletries is something that you can buy in bulk uh, when you're buying in bulk most of the times what happens is you end up getting good deals so you might want to check those out then there are also a few things that you can buy from a dollar store um, i mean i'm not suggesting you to buy skin care products or uh, anything edible from that store uh, but there are a few things that we use on every day basis and we just ultimately throw them away for example there is trash can bags or paper towels i think i've said enough on groceries now uh, if you want me to make a detailed video on how to save money on grocery shopping uh, let me know in the comment section my next advice would be cooking by yourself i know if you're a student it is the last last thing that you want to add to your chore list but trust me this practice helps to cut down a lot of expenditure that is done on takeaways uh, or those morning cup of coffees and scones every day i would say best way to manage time for cooking is by uh, advanced meal planning or uh, prepping over the weekend one thing that i've experienced personally is that whenever i do meal planning and prepping during the weekends uh, not only it helps me um, save time during the weekdays but it somehow restricts those impulse decisions uh, of getting expensive or unhealthy meals last minute this is more of a personal experience but i think if your last minute hunger drives your uh, meal decisions then most of the times you end up buying uh, food that you're craving and that is 
unhealthy food right one problem that i think you might run into uh, if you're like cooking for a single person is that uh, you'll be left with a lot of leftovers uh, and i can totally relate with that situation because uh, in my house uh, my husband and i both have very different taste preferences i mean on most days we end up having different meals for ourselves and personally i'm not a person who will eat uh, the same thing for lunch and like repeat it uh, for my dinner so what i do to like break that monotony uh, is like prepare a meal for my dinner and like eat the leftovers the very next day for lunch so that way time for preparing lunch the next day is also saved you can do the same i mean take your leftovers uh, to the university the next day and like save all that money that was going to be your lunch money or uh, you can always cook a big batch of your favorite food and like toss it in the freezer uh, so that you can eat that later next could be saving on subscriptions now we are literally living on subscription these days there's hulu there's netflix there's uh, uh, spotify and the list goes on and on uh, gone are the days when we used to rely on cable network for entertainment but with more options most of the times what we end up doing is uh, getting subscriptions which we don't even actually use i mean there's nothing wrong with having a service if you actively use it uh, but if you're not a frequent user i would say it's wise to drop that service um even the subscriptions that you are actively using you can like uh, uh, share the password amongst your friends and family uh, and like split the cost right next thing that might be helpful is uh, use of cash for leisure now if you are going out to party i would highly suggest to use cash for drinks and never never ever open a tab in a bar that is a recipe for disaster bar is like the worst place to pay with your credit cards people end up spending more money than they're supposed to when they're drunk and the next morning when they learn about their crazy expenses it's too late already you can even try to make a habit of uh, spending in cash whenever you are going outside for uh, a fancy meal or any other event that way in the back of your head you are like constantly thinking that uh, this is the amount of money that i have in my wallet uh, and this is the money that i'm going to spend so it's more like a psychological thing that you're just being cautious with the money that you have honestly i'm not a big fan of keeping cash with me uh, because most of the times what happens is i end up uh, keeping the bills in my jeans pocket or my coat pocket and that way i just lose money but i would still recommend that you use cash for these kind of occasions or if you know that you can responsibly use a credit card make sure you get one of those uh, the ones with uh, cash back options most companies offer those credit cards uh, with like 3 to 5% of cash back uh, so that's a good thing to have another thing that i would like to mention if you're getting a credit card uh, make sure you get uh, one of those which does not have any annual fee or any other hidden fee and if you do not have any credit history in this country uh, that's quite the case with every international student uh, or for some reason your credit card uh, request is not being accepted you can always apply for a secured credit card if you are an international student uh, Uh, you'll probably face some difficulty to get a credit card in this country because you do not have an SSN. Uh, that's where some companies can help you uh, and get a secured credit card. One of the benefit of having a secured credit card is it lets you uh, build a history, a credit history in this country. So by the time you actually graduate from college, it will give you like ample amount of time uh, to build that history and make your future transactions easy. Uh, for example, if you want to get a new apartment or a new car, or if you're like looking for a new job, anything that requires a good credit history, uh, it will give you like ample amount of time and you can like build that uh, during your college days. All you have to do is just make sure that you're using your card. responsibly and paying your bills on time now next on the list is splitting the cost now if you are living with a flatmate make sure that you split all the cost of the products that you are using together from major expenses like electricity bill or water bill uh, to some petty expenses like uh, cleaning supplies or uh, trash can bags right i know these kind of expenses look kind of petty and uh, uh, most of the times what happens is people do not ask their uh, flatmates to like split the cost because the expense is a really small but honestly if you like add those numbers it comes up to be a pretty big amount uh, and i really don't think it's fair for one person to pay for the entire thing and like cover all the expenses so i really believe that you should split the cost of every product that you're using together uh, it will really help you in the long run plus most of the times what happens is if you're like trying to be nice people just take advantage of you uh, so you definitely don't want that to happen to yourself right so it's really important to like lay down some ground rules in advance and like share the responsibilities for example what you can do 
is uh, one member can pay for a month's supply of toilet paper and the other one can uh, pay for cleaning supplies. So that way you can like share the responsibilities and like share the cost. Now next thing that you can do is make sure that you're using your student discounts properly. There are a lot of places where you can actually avail that student discount. Uh, for example, uh, public transportation, uh, then your insurance providers, uh, then if you're like going out for movies or uh, even some restaurants provide uh, these kind of uh, student discounts. If you show your student ID, companies like Apple also uh, provide some student discount on like some of their products. Subscription services like Amazon uh, delivery also offer uh, student discounts. I mean, in some places it may not have been advertised very well, uh, but there's nothing wrong with asking. Another important practice that I think might be helpful is uh, automating payments and switching to electronic bills. There are a few companies who give discounts when people switch from uh, paper bills to uh, electronic bills. And when you choose to automate your payments, you're kind of making sure that you do not have an extra thing to be added on your chore list. And you're kind of making sure that you do not have to pay uh, that late fee penalty anymore. Now, while you are cutting back all those extra unnecessary expenses from a budget list, uh, just make sure that you cut enough to meet all your necessary expenses and also uh, save some money for a financial cushion. Now, when I say financial cushion, uh, what I mean is uh, just be prepared for uh, any kind of unexpected expense. Uh, it could be anything like uh, uh, your uh, roommate moved out and all of a sudden you just have to pay the entire rent by yourself or your car broke and now you have to like uh, uh, pay for its upkeep or, or for its maintenance. So these are the kind of uh, unexpected expense which uh, like can come at any point of time. I mean, I know it feels like a luxury to have that kind of cushion, uh, especially if you're on a tight budget. Uh, but trust me, uh, you'll never regret this decision. It doesn't have to be a lot of money. It can be as little as $10 a month. Just having that hobby of like uh, saving and then investing will keep you going in the long run. Now let's talk about some bonus tips for students who are coming to US for their education. I mean, student life is already difficult because you're in a tight budget. Uh, and if you're an international student, things just get more critical. There's so many extra expenses that just fall right into the lap of international students. I mean, if I have to talk about like one specific uh, major expense, I would say those expensive flight tickets that take you back home. You can't really do anything about it. Uh, tickets are expensive. Uh, the best you can do is try to find cheaper deals. There are some good practices that help you to like save a couple of bucks on those flight tickets. I would say if you're looking for a cheaper option, always have a time window of like two to three months. Uh, booking two, three months in advance would probably fetch you uh, better deals. You'll need to closely monitor the ticket prices from time to time. Uh, there are many websites out there. There's like a sky scanner, but I personally, for some reason, like Google flights. I don't know, it's more of a personal thing. I just feel they are more transparent with the prices. So that's, that's more of a personal choice, but there are many websites that help you uh, find a cheaper option. And one thing that is to be absolutely avoided uh, is to book tickets last minute. Uh, last minute tickets are always expensive. For example, if you are flying to a particular destination for $1,000, uh, you'll probably end up paying $4,000 or $5,000, depending on the location, of course. Depending on the location, you might end up paying two times or three times uh, of the cost that you usually pay for the flight ticket. So my advice would be to have like two to three months of time window in your hand before you book a flight ticket and like, absolutely avoid booking tickets last minute then there are also some airline companies who offer like student discount uh, one of them is delta now i'm not really sure how much discount do they offer but uh, that's something that you can check that out Another thing that you can do is uh, look for flight tickets from airports that have a higher probability of giving you the cheaper deals. Let me back this with an example here. Let's say you're living in Washington DC and you're looking for flight deal options from DC to uh, New Delhi, India. And you found a deal that is like for uh, $1,100. Uh, then at the same time, you also found out that if you fly from New York to New Delhi, uh, the ticket prices would be $800. In that case, I would say you should definitely go with the latter option. Uh, you can like, drive from DC to New York or choose like any other means of transportation. In fact, if, you f if you're able to find a good domestic deal, you can even um, fly from DC to New York. So my point here is you should definitely keep your options open and like 
keep a track of the flight tickets very closely now my next advice would be to open a bank account in your new country opening a bank account in a local bank is amongst the very first few things that you should do uh, when you are coming here for education that will help you save a lot of bank charges when you're trying to transfer money from one country to the other so yeah open a local bank account you can always ask for help in the department of international students in your university and they'll probably point you in the right direction now next thing that can be helpful for international student is to get a job on campus uh, now if you are an international student getting a job off campus is out of the question uh, but what you can do is you can work on campus for like 19 to 20 hours a week for that you will have to talk to your school official they'll probably give you a better picture and they'll help you and guide you in the right direction i mean if we talk in terms of how much money you will get for those jobs uh, i will not say it will be enough uh, to cover all your expenses but you will definitely have some extra cash in your hand to spend one last piece of advice that i really wanted to share with you guys is to rule out the use of debit cards uh, debit cards have higher chances of thefts and frauds um, especially if you're an international student i would say you really need to be extra careful reason being your family isn't here or your parents aren't here uh, to support you in times of crisis so you really need to be extra careful god forbid if anything bad happens um, if your debit card gets stolen or there's an unapproved uh, card transaction uh, you're left with no money in this country till the point if family transfers money from overseas you are like left with no money in this country and that is really a nightmare to have trust me you don't want to experience that kind of situation so yeah try and rule out the use of debit cards as much as possible or at least try not to use them publicly expose them publicly i mean sure credit cards may seem like uh, they are making you more prone towards extra spending uh, but i'd say they are still secure ways of payment in case of any unapproved transaction you can just call the credit card company and they like cancel the charge and issue you a new card so that really gives you a sense of security i think we have discussed enough for today let's wind up today's video if you like this video do not forget to hit like button also if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe my channel uh, see you next time until then bye bye